again, welcome everybody. So good to have you in the house today. Let's give our Facebook audience and YouTube audience a round of applause. Thank you so much for joining us. We believe God's going to minister to all of you today, just as he is to everyone in the house this morning. So let's pray. We'll get right to the word. Father, thank you for your precious, holy written word today. And Lord, as we look to your word, we trust the Holy Spirit to give utterance and unction. May you think through my mind and speak through my mouth and may you bring revelation through my spirit. I declare over every one of you here in the house, those of you watching, that you are good ground today, that you hear the word and receive it and bear fruit, some 30, 60, and finally a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Say amen if you receive that. Hey, our good friends, the Doyles are in the house, Dan and Denise Doyle, always a joy to, always, they're our, they're our bike, motorcycle riding partners, and so... They come our way sometimes, we come their way, and then we get out on the great adventure, and so always a joy, dear friends of ours and friends of this ministry as well, always a pleasure to see them. All right, what have we been talking about the last few weeks? Let me answer that question for you, because some of you look like, oh no, I'm going to go. We've been talking about Jesus' passion, as you know, the, the week of Jesus' passion where he came into Jerusalem and, of course, eventually was crucified, and we talked about Easter, the resurrection uh, of our Lord Jesus. How many of you know Jesus changed everything when he showed up, right? And through the power of the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection, everything changed on the planet. And the fulfillment of the Father's heart was fulfilled through Jesus in redeeming you and redeeming me. How many of you know right now the Father is smiling? <laughs> He's smiling on, on us because he accomplished his mission to redeem all of mankind to those who would believe and receive. So I want you to know God's favor is smiling upon you right now because of Jesus. You say, Pastor Fred, you don't understand. My life's a mess. I got issues. You all got issues. That's why we need Jesus. That's why he came. He didn't come for the, for the, for the healthy. He came for the sick. In other words, those who are in trouble spiritually. That's all of us. And so through Jesus, we know that God is smiling upon us, his love and his favor with us. We found out, just a quick review, Romans chapter 4, verse 25, very powerful truth. Jesus was delivered up because of our offenses, because of our sins, but he was raised up because of our justification. And we found out when we see Jesus walking free, being raised from the dead, we know that the payment has been fully made for all of our sins. Praise the Lord. The payment made in full. The Father's heart is satisfied. And Jesus ascended to the right hand of the Father. And now the scripture says we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. With Christ knowing that all is well between us and the Father because of Jesus Christ our Lord. And so Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Now because on this side of the cross now we have been justified by faith. And we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that a beautiful truth? In other words, the war is over. The struggle between God and man that has gone on for centuries before Jesus, the struggle to somehow, now it's over. Now we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise. I said praise God forevermore. You might not have peace with your neighbor. You might not have peace with this person. Or there might be struggles. But I want you to know if you're in Christ today, all is well between you and God. Because he sees you, sees you in Christ. You are forever in his favor. You say, yeah, thank God. Not because of you, but all because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody just needs to say amen right now. Because many of you came in this, as Alana beautifully said, you may have come in with burdens, but you're leaving free today. You might have come in thinking, man, I got shame, condemnation, my life's a mess. And, but if you know the revelation of Jesus and the power of the cross, you know that, yes, we have sinned, but because of the blood, we are made clean. And we are righteous by faith in the blood of Jesus. That's why the scripture says, by grace through faith, we receive our, not only our salvation, but every Bible promise. Grace is God's part. He did it without you. Through Jesus. You weren't even around. You couldn't even help out. <laughs> he finished the work of the cross. And he's not. Now, faith is our part. We say the yes and amen. We receive not only a great salvation, but everything that Jesus has purchased for us, we receive. And so that's good news. And so uh, 
we understand that when Jesus ushered in the new covenant, my message today is entitled The Comforter. Everyone say that with me, The Comforter. Because when, when Jesus accomplished this beautiful task, the most powerful events that ever have happened in the history of the planet happened during that one week of Jesus' passion. And, and when Jesus accomplished and brought in this new covenant of grace, of the new birth that we have in Christ, guess who was also to follow in that great outpouring, the great and mighty Holy Spirit. Because we, we understand that, that Jesus, under the old covenant, the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit played a different role upon the earth. Because the Holy Spirit, who is God, the third person of the triune God, can I have an amen? amen. He could not live inside of us under the old covenant because the blood of bulls and goats could never take away their sins. It just covered them for a season or pushed them all forward until they came to Jesus. So God's beautiful plan was from Adam to all the people, all of Adam's sins and everyone else, every year they were pushed forward and to the last person ever born in the future, all of the sins of the entire world were compressed on the cross of Christ. And Jesus absorbed every wrath, every judgment, every penalty for the sins of the entire world, the Bible says. And six hours of suffering and judgment that was meant for us fell upon Jesus until finally he cried out, what? It is finished. And as we said, when, when Jesus said it was finished, the curtain in the temple, the holies of holies, is which where the Holy Spirit dwelt under the old covenant in that holy place, which, by the way, no one went in there except the high priest once a year to offer the blood of bulls and goats for their sins and the sins of the people. And by the way, when he went into that holy place, the holies of holies, he went in with fear and trembling. Because if everything wasn't done just right, he's going down. So they tied a rope to his ankle, and they put pomegranates on, 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 the, on, the, on the rope. And so when he went in, if something went bad, they could get him out. And so they offered that. But when Jesus died, it is finished, as we found out. A powerful earthquake rocked the entire land, and God tore that temple that separated that holy place uh, the four inches thick in two from top to bottom, signifying that the Holy Spirit no longer dwells in man-made temples. Now, because of the blood of Jesus, when we are called upon him, the Holy Spirit comes to live in us and on us. Glory to God forevermore. I say, hallelujah, the great comforter. And so, so what a privilege we are to live in this day. So John chapter 14, Jesus is speaking right before this is during his week of passion when he makes these statements to his disciples. And, and he says this, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter. That word comforter, if you know, it's the word paraclete. It means, it means and, and in the Amplified Version, we have it all spelled out for us, what the Holy Spirit will do for us when he comes. And he has come. He will give you another comforter. Anybody else, anybody need ever need comfort besides me in the house today. As Alana said so beautifully, you feel weights and burdens. We need the comfort of the Holy Spirit to comfort us and to assure us that he, God is working on our behalf. And so Jesus said, I, I will send another comforter. By the way, he says it's of the same kind. In other words, just like me, Jesus is saying. Because when Jesus was on the earth, he'd be in one place at one time. But he says, I want to send the Holy Spirit, and he's going to be everywhere at the same time and can minister to everyone who trusts in him. And so he's, when the Holy Spirit comes, he's our comforter. You say, I'm having a bad day. I'm having a bad week. Why don't you look to the comforter on the inside of you and say, Lord, I'm going to trust Holy Spirit. Thank you for your beautiful ministry. I tell you, I say that often. So I'm going about and I'm feeling some pressure, some weight on some things. I say, wait a minute. And thank God for the comfort of one another. The Bible teaches that we need one another. But you may not be available. You can't ask Cindy and the worship team to show up in your house when you're feeling bad. Right? I'm sorry, she's not coming. Since I said, play me that song, boy, on Sunday. That was a beautiful. And I felt the comfort. I said, but she's not coming Monday, Tuesday. Went, Come on. No. But how many of you got something better? 
you got the Holy Spirit in you and on you who's a great comforter. And I just pause sometimes. You know what? Enough of this rat race and, and, and all the goings on. Lord, I just, I just pause a moment and I look to the Holy Spirit who's in me and on me, who never leaves me. Nor for, and I just receive of your divine strength and comfort right now. And I tell you, the Spirit of God will rush, come on, and fill you with comfort. We have a sevenfold meaning, uh, meaning of, uh, of that word paraclete. The Holy Spirit is your comforter, and he's your counselor. Anybody ever need counsel divine from heaven? I mean, the Holy Spirit, you can't beat him. <laughs> I said, you can't beat him. Anybody need help ever in your life? You've got the helper that lives with you forever. Wow. And intercessor, the Holy Spirit even prays for us. Wow. Uh. Advocate, come on, he's pleading your case. The enemy says, you're disqualified, you've sinned, you've messed up. The Holy Spirit says, hold on, Jesus took every curse from him, every sin. Now he's in God's favor and forever forgiven. That's what the Holy Spirit's going to tell you, not beat you over the head. No, he's your strengthener. Anybody ever need strength beside me? I'm going through something that's been lasting for months. Come on, we're drawing upon you, Holy Spirit, your strength, your comfort, and stand by. In other words, when unexpected things happen, which they happen, come on, to all of us, the Holy Spirit stand by, he's waiting. And you get the bad news or phone call, whatever it is, he said, hey, don't worry, man, we got you. I'm standing right by, right here to help. You got an emergency and a crisis, something, you didn't see it coming. I'm right here to bring you help. I'm right here to bring you comfort, counsel. Pray for you, advocate, and strengthen you. In other words, we're getting through this just like he's helped us last time and the time before. What a beautiful privilege we have to have the Holy Spirit dwell within us. And then Jesus says in verse 18, he says, uh, I will not leave you orphans. Because remember, Jesus told his disciples, I'm going to go away for a while. And, and then I'll be back after the after the cross, and then I'm, I'm going to heaven. But I will not leave you orphans because they're sad. They're thinking Jesus, and he's saying, you know, orphans, they feel abandoned, they feel lonely. But how many of you know Jesus saying, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to leave you that way because when I go, I'm going to send the helper, the Holy Spirit, that comforter. And he goes on to, he goes on to the previous verse, that we just looked at, he says, and I will be with you. Can you put that back up, Cindy, the previous verse? I will, so that he may remain with you, how long? Forever. Everyone say forever. forever. It's not like in the days of the Holy Spirit, as I said, he played a different role. In the, in the old covenant, the Holy Spirit came upon basically three groups of people. The Holy Spirit came upon, yes, the priest, the king, and the prophet. And those three groups of people, if they had a task to do, there was prophesying to be done and so forth, the Holy Spirit would come upon them, and they would do their task, and then the Holy Spirit would lift. And then when they needed help, and so you see that, because the Holy Spirit could not remain and only came on them. It did not come in them because the sin problem has not yet been resolved. But how many of you know, because Jesus resolved the sin problem forever, now the Holy Spirit, he comes in you and on you and remains with you forever. <clears throat> None of this coming on and off and say, well, I sinned, I messed up, I wonder. The Holy Spirit is there to remind you your sins are forgiven. He's not, he's not leaving you. I say, he's not leaving you. He's not abandoning you. But David wrote in the Old Testament because his blood of bulls and goats was not enough. And he wrote about, you know, he, he, felt, he felt the Holy Spirit take natural presence from me because he knew under the blood of bulls and goats he, his covenant was inferior. It didn't take care of things as it should. But now he says, I will never leave you. And he remains in you and on you. Praise God. I said, praise God forevermore. And really, if you look at it, I know a lot of times we... We, we look at some of the disciples that were with Jesus, especially Peter, and we get on his case because he was a big talker and he was bold and he made all these bragging things when Jesus said, someone's going to deny me this night. And, and uh, uh, Peter, remember, said, Jesus said, all of you, in fact, are going to uh, flee. And Jesus said, Lord, I, 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 even if you, I have to die with you, I'll not deny you. How many remember Peter's big mouth, right? And, and, of course, he denied him three times. 
that night when all that was going on. But did you know on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came in as a rushing mighty wind and filled all of them and divided tongues of fire sat upon them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke with other tongues, the scripture says. Did you know from that day forward, Peter never denied Jesus again. In fact, he had boldness that he never knew before. Why? Because the Holy Spirit makes all the difference. And Peter stood up and he preached Jesus boldly. And 3,000 were saved that day on the day of Pentecost. And later on, not 5,000 as Peter declared Jesus. And I want you to know today, because we have the Holy Spirit in us and on us, come on, there's a fresh boldness and a fresh anointing that will allow us to stand up and declare Jesus and to be a bright light in this world. He abides with us forever. Praise God forevermore. Let's go to, uh, by the way, some years ago, when Cindy and I were on a, on a road trip, and we were uh, on a road trip to Oklahoma, and we, we stopped off over on Route 66, some of the old roads, and I know we've ridden with Dan and Denise on those, those motorcycle road uh, trips, uh, on those roads, but some years ago, Cindy and I stopped at a little mom-pop cafe on our, on our way there on our old Route 66, and you know they're just, they just got a few mom-pop restaurants. So we, we stopped in it for breakfast one morning, and the special on the board was blueberry pancakes special. Some of you heard me tell this story, but it's worth repeating. I want to hear it myself. <laughs> like Daryl Sundberg says, I know you've heard it, but I want to hear it again. Am I right, Daryl? Just tell it. Everybody say, just tell it again, Pastor. <laughs> Thank you. So we go into the restaurant, and there's a blueberry pancake special on the, on the board. So I asked the server, I said, you have a blueberry pancake special? Yes. And I say, listen, are the blue, I said, I think I'm going to order that, but I, I want to know, are the blue, the blueberries, are they, are they in the pancake batter, or are they just on top of the pancake? Because I want the blueberries in the pancake, and I want the blueberries on top of the pancake too. <laughs> Which one is it? Well, blah, 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 she hemmed and hawed around, blind and came out, not, not satisfactory. But how many of you know, the things of God, the Holy Spirit, through Jesus, we got not only blueberries in us, but on us by the power of God. The Holy Spirit, Jesus said, comes in you and on you, and he never leaves nor forsakes you. Mm. Woo, praise God. Double duty. And so we're, we're so thankful for that, that we live under this beautiful covenant of the new covenant when the Holy Spirit dwells in us. So Jesus continues in, in John chapter 16, his discord to, to the disciples talking about the Holy Spirit. And he says, nevertheless, I want to tell you, you boys, something. It's to your advantage that I go away. Now, how many of you know that shocked them? They're like, how, how is it to our advantage? We've been with you for over three years. We've enjoyed your blessing, your grace. We've seen all, the, all that you've done. And, and how is it better for us if you go away? Jesus said, if I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And how many of you know that's just what he's done? Drop down. Go on. We'll continue reading. And when he has come, and he has, right? When he has come, he will convict or convince the world of sin <clears throat> excuse me, and of righteousness and of judgment. Yes, bring, bring me up that water. Thank you, Carol. And now, when, when we see, this, when we see this, this verse, sometimes we can make our own interpretation of what this means, that the Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, and we say this, that, and the other. But how many of you know Jesus actually gives the own interpretation of what this means? So let's put off our, take off our traditional glasses of what we all think this means, and let's just hear what Jesus said it means. How many of you for that? So what does he mean? The Holy Spirit will convict or convince the world of sin, notice one, and of right, and of judgment. Drop down, let's see. So Jesus is going, of sin, because they do not believe in me. I want you to know today that the Holy Spirit, because sometimes we say the Holy Spirit is out there and he's convicting everybody of every sin they commit. But according to Jesus, the only 
sin, the, in, the Holy Spirit is interested in is convicting you of the sin of unbelief. Because even if the world, even if your sinner friend next door who acts a mess stops acting a mess without Jesus, they're still not, they're not it's no good. <laughs> they're still not saved. Just stopping sinning saves no one. We're all against sin and, and God's against it. But he, God, rec Jesus recognized that the Holy Spirit has to go for the juggler. Not about all these sins, but about the sin of unbelief or rejecting Jesus. And so the Holy Spirit convicts the world of the sin of unbelief. How many of you remember when you got saved? The Lord didn't remind you of everything you've ever done. He didn't have that much time. Right? No. This, 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 this. Let me turn the page. No. What did the Holy Spirit do? The scripture says the goodness of God leads men to repentance. The Holy Spirit put in you that God is good and that he sent Jesus. And when you receive him, every, every sin come on clear again. That's what the Holy Spirit does. That's the job of the Holy Spirit where the world is concerned to convict the sin of unbelief because they do not believe in me. Everybody say, we got that cleared up. Okay, the next one of sin and of righteousness, the Holy Spirit convicts or convinces of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. So sometimes we think, yeah, the Holy Spirit, he's out there knocking people over the head, live righteously. Again, if you're not saved, what good is it? But the Holy Spirit reminds us, convinces us, that we are righteous by faith in the blood because Jesus is no longer here and we cannot look into his face. You see his face no more because the disciples were used to there with Jesus and Jesus like the woman at, at the well or the woman who committed adultery and they saw Jesus' love and grace for her and they saw it on his face and they heard it. But Jesus said, you will not see that compassion on me, but the Holy Spirit will remind you. That you are righteous by faith. Under the Old Testament, the prophets of God by the Spirit reminded the people of their sin. Under the New Covenant, come on, the Holy Spirit reminds you that you are righteous by faith. That your sins are forgiven. Praise God. I said praise God. He convicts of righteousness that you are righteous by faith. Remember the New Testament that we receive the gift of righteousness and abundance of grace by which we rule and reign in life through one Jesus Christ. So when we fail and we mess up, the Holy Spirit's not there. <clears throat> Let me knock you in the head a little more. How, how could you have done that again? No, who needs a nag? Our spouses take care of that, right? If we mess up, <laughs> listen, if we mess up, our spouses tell us. <laughs> and, 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 right? And, and, and if they don't, you got your own conscience. That's, come on, letting you know, ooh, that was not good. Right? I messed up. So you don't need, the Holy Spirit doesn't have to bang. You have your own spirit, your own conscious knows. And then the Holy Spirit's there to remind you, remember Jesus, the blood. You're righteous by faith. You're forgiven. You don't have to go backslide. You don't have to go back in the world, uh, in the world still in shame and guilt and condemnation. No, 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 no. The blood is availing for you. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. The Holy Spirit reminds us that we are righteous by faith because Jesus' face, his face, we can't see him anymore. He can't, he's not there to tell us, but the Holy Spirit is there to remind us. Everybody say, that's make, that's, 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 that sounds good, all right? Okay, next one, next one, of judgment. Yeah, God's pouring his wrath upon the earth. Wait a minute. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. The Holy, who's the world, the God of this world, God little G Satan. Until the, his lease runs out, which he's running out of time very quickly. But until then, he's the God of this world, God little G. And he moves about, tries to oppress people. But Jesus defeated Satan at the cross. We found out Jesus' heel crushed his head at the cross and stripped him. He's been judged by the Lord Jesus Christ and stripped of his power and authority. And now, when the enemy comes against us and things happen and we think, oh, the devil this, the Holy Spirit reminds us, the devil has been stripped. He's been judged. You are an overcomer. Rise up in the strength of your authority in Christ and resist the devil and resist these things of the world and know that you, the greater one dwells in you. He 
enemy has been defeated and judged. That's what the Holy Spirit is going to convict and convince and remind you of. Isn't he beautiful? Let's give the Lord praise right now for his spirit. We're so thankful for that. Do we have, do we have, where, where are we at? Did we finish that scripture? I still have many things to say to you, Jesus said, but you cannot bear them now. They struggled to, to receive that, the disciples. But now under the new covenant of grace, all these things have been revealed and more. Drop down. And then he says, however, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he tells his disciples, which he has. Uh, he will guide you into what? All truth. For he shall not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. That is, the Holy Spirit hears from the Father and the Son. He will speak and bear witness and give unction, and he will show you and tell you things to come. Notice he guides you into all truth. Maybe you're just young in the Lord. I remember years ago, and I was just young in, in the Lord and didn't know much but I remember I was in a, in a small Bible study setting and the instructor in the Bible study was talking about the Holy Spirit and he was talking about, you know, the day of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit come and speak in tongues and all this. And, and, but, but this teacher was telling us, but tongues is no longer of God. It's no longer valid today. If anything, it's of the devil. And I was just a young person. I didn't know anything, but did you know in my spirit I was saved? In my spirit, the Holy Spirit told me to reject that teaching. I rejected it. I didn't even have any scriptures to back them up because I didn't know them. But I, so I was learning. But I had the Holy Spirit in me who guides us into all truth. And so even though I didn't know the scripture to, to, to debate or to back it up, I still rejected it because the Holy Spirit was told me to know. Right now, I, I could have them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with a word right now. Come on, if, if I had the opportunity. But thank God, the Holy Spirit, you see, you're not, not sure about something. The Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. Something doesn't feel right. Scratching in your spirit. You're like, mm-mm. But you have the witness of the unction. Wow, this is of God. Like you're feeling right now, right? This is of the Lord. For he will not see, but he will show you and tell you and guide us in things to come. Thank God for his precious Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Let's lift our hands right now. I'm going to ask Cindy and the team to, to, to come forward just now because I want to close with something a little uh, different today um, as we worship God and, and experience the comfort of the Lord, the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And I know we sang this song earlier. We're going to sing it again, but I want to I close with this scripture from, from Acts, the third chapter, Acts chapter 3. Notice it says, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. And in just a moment, in a little bit, if you're here in the house and you say, I need Jesus, I want my sins blotted out, I don't know for sure. The Bible says, repent, change your mind, change what you believe, to believe in the power of the blood. And be converted, be saved, be amongst those who are redeemed. Notice that your sins would be blotted out, not just covered, erased, blotted out completely, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. There's something powerful about the precious anointing of the Holy Spirit. Pastor Mark, you touched on it in prayer this morning, the tangible presence of the anointing where the Spirit of God will just come and you can literally sense His peace, His comfort, His presence minister life into your heart. You know, years ago when we, not long after we were purchasing this building, and, and uh, it was a daunting task when we bought this building. It was an old grocery store in disrepair, a mess, and we were negotiating about it, praying about buying this, this property in this building, and uh, some people in the church were not in favor of it, and they, and, and they began to approach me and say, you know, there's problems with this property. There's problems with some of the, the issues. It's got this issue, and it's got that issue, and I don't think God wants to. But I knew in my spirit God was going to help us through every, every roadblock. And I knew in my spirit this place was right. Baron was with us back days, and we, were, we, we bought this, and we, we built this out. And, but the pressure was just coming upon me. And I remember uh, uh, we went, Cindy and I went to a pizza place here in town locally 
and all this was going on. I was feeling the pressure of it. And, and Jarvin and Debbie Morehouse came into the, that pizza place. Some of you remember Jarv. He's gone on home to be with the Lord now. But Jarv came in, and we were sitting there at pizza, and, and I think Jarv was involved with all helping us and all. And, and he must have saw it on my face and saw it in my eyes, right in the middle of, of trying to make this all happen. And Jarv came over to me. He said, Pastor Fred, he said, and, and he put his hand on my shoulder. And he said, Pastor Fred, I know there's a lot of stuff going on right now, and you're you're feeling the weight of it. But he just began to pray, and I just said, he said, I just pray a release in your life. And the Holy and I felt coming from his hand divine strength and comfort come right into my spirit. Right there at a pizza place. Between you know pepper and, and jarva too. And 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 the, the anointing just came down on me, and that and that burden lifted off of me. And I felt that divine peace and comfort. And he and Jarvis said, Pastor Fred, it's, it's all going to be okay. It's going to work out. Be at rest. You'll see. God's going to take care of everything. And I just said, yeah, thank you, Jarvis. I just received that. And how many of you know he did take care of everything? And we're here today, right? So God is so good. So as they sing this song, those of you that want to come down to the altar and just kneel for a few moments, because you don't have to leave with whatever's burdening you today. But you can say, Lord, I'm looking to you, and I receive your comfort, Holy Spirit, and your peace, and your joy. Today, through the power of the blood and the Holy Spirit, that great comforter, that great helper, that great counselor, and standby teacher, guide, friend, advocate. Father, we thank you so much for your beautiful presence to refresh everyone in the house today. We thank you for it in Jesus' precious name. Say amen if you receive that. You may be seated. As we remain in the spirit of prayer today, if there's anybody here in the house, and you say, I need Jesus to be my Lord today. I need Jesus to be my Savior today. I want to call upon him and trust him and know for certain that all my sins of my entire life will be purged and washed and forgiven, and I have eternal life and abundant life to look forward to. Or maybe you're here today and you're a Christian, but you just feel like in recent times your heart's gone cold and stale, and you need a fresh start. You need a new beginning and, and a rededication of your life to the Lord. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, you're in the house of those of you watching. If you need Jesus today, you need to be saved, or you need a fresh start or a new beginning, a recommitment to the Lord. Just very boldly, just slip up your hand right, right where you're at. Say, Pastor Fred, pray for me. I need Jesus, or I need a fresh start. I need a, a new beginning in my walk and in my life with the Lord. With an uplifted hand, you're saying, pray for me. And I want to pray for those of you that are online as well to pray this simple prayer of, of, of salvation and recommitment to the Lord. Say this after me, all of you, those of you watching as well. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. I make Jesus Christ both Lord and Savior of my life. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I receive your Holy Spirit and his comfort. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you give a round of applause? Come on, all those that called on Jesus, those of you watching as well. We want to encourage you today. Keep coming back to church. Keep learning more and more about all that God has done for you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I'm, I'm glad I came to church today. How about you? Listen, we love you all. Cindy and I, our entire pastoral team, we love each and every one of you. We pray for you. We don't take it lightly that you've chosen us to be your pastors, and so we want you to know we have you in our hearts. We pray for you. We believe God's grace and blessings are upon your life. Are you ready for the blessing? If you'd like, lift up your hand. I'm going to speak this blessing over every one of you in your household, those of you watching as well throughout this week. As your pastor, I speak this blessing. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep, protect, and prosper your way, you and your loved ones throughout this week. And may God give his angels charge concerning you to keep you from all evil, harm, or accident, or injury in Jesus' name, that you may dwell under the shadow of the Almighty, that no evil plague, disaster, or calamity comes near your dwelling. And may the great comfort and peace and joy of the Holy Spirit come upon you in a fresh way in Jesus' name. And may God place you at the right place at the right time with the right people. And finally, may his shalom peace 
and rest be your constant companion throughout this week. In Jesus' name, say amen if you receive that. All right, God bless you. We love you. You are dismissed.